Hey guys. Okay. Today we are going to take a look at another type of function table. These are called function tables. Um, we have a function here, something happens, and then we come out with an output. So um, we have different steps, one, two, three, and n. And I just want you to know that n can stand for any number. It doesn't have to be um, four. If I wanted n to be 100, it can be any number. Okay, and what we need to do is actually we need to solve for n. So what is the rule for n? So we have to figure out what's happening in order to get this output. So if this is the input, this is the output. So if you think about it as a machine, okay, if I put in one thing, if I put in this one, what happens to this one, what happens here in order to turn it into a three? So it's like a factory. If I put something in, or like a cake, if I put my ingredients in here, what do I do in the middle to make it turn into a cake? Okay, in this case, if I put in one, what do I do in the middle to make it turn into a three? Well, if it's a small number, small number is the input. If the input is small and it goes to a bigger output, to a bigger number, we are going up. And when we go up, we add or we multiply. Those are the two functions that we can do. We can add and multiply. We can just add, we can just multiply, or we can add and multiply. So we can do lots of different things. Or we can even add and then subtract. So it depends on what you want to do. But when we go up from input to output, we usually either add or multiply. Now if you went from bigger down to a smaller number, okay, then we are going to subtract and divide. So for example, if I were to go, let's see, the smaller number could be going from 1 to 3, and in this case we could go 3 to 1. So it depends on which, if this was a 2, it would go bigger. If this was a 4, it would go smaller. So if you go bigger, it's plus or times. If you go smaller, it's minus or division. So those are the, the way that we look at the input and the output. In this case, we're going to the bigger. So we go from 2 to 6, 3 to 9, n. This one should be a bigger number over here. Okay? So once I understand that, I have to figure out the rule. So we are either going to add or multiply. That's the first thing I have to figure out. Are we adding or multiplying? Well, 1 plus what equals 3? 1 plus 2 equals 3. Well, that rule makes sense. However, does the rule go all the way down our, our table? <clears throat> so that means 2 plus 2 should equal 6. If it doesn't equal 6, then it's not plus 2. And we have to figure it out again. So we tried plus 2. That didn't work. So let's try something else. Okay? How do we get to 3? We tried the plus, it didn't work, so let's try something else. We go from 1 to 3. Well, 1 times what equals 3? 1 times 3 equals 3. Well, that makes sense. That rule works. Does it work for the next one? 2 times 3. 2 times 3 equals 6. Well, that checks out because 2 times 3 equals 6. Let's see if it keeps going. 3 times 3 equals 9. That is true as well. So my rule for n, what is the rule for n? The rule for n is n, which is any number, times 3. Okay? So the rule for n in this case is n times 3. So if I changed n to 100, I can then say 100 times 3 equals 300. And my rule would still work. So n is 100 
times 3 would equal 300. So my input is 100. My output would be 300. Let's try another one. Okay, now you see my new table. So as you see it here, we are still looking as n, there's my n, as any number. Any number on the input side is an n, okay? What is the rule for n? So we have to figure out what happens to n in order to make it the output. So we start with 1 and we make it to 4. Smaller to bigger means that we are going to either add or multiply one or the other or both. So it depends on what we do. If we add and it doesn't work and if we multiply it doesn't work then we need to try both things. So let's go with adding. 1 plus what equals 4? Well, 1 plus 3 equals 4. We know that that works. 2 plus 3 equals 7. Well, that doesn't work. So if I want to add, I can say 2 plus what equals 7? 2 plus 5 equals 7. Okay? 3 plus what equals 10. 3 plus 7 equals 10. So we can't quite get there that way. So let's try by multiplying. We know that adding's not working. Let's try multiplying. 1 times 4 equals 4. 2 times 4 equals 8. Well, that doesn't work because that doesn't equal. This one equals, that doesn't equal. So that rule doesn't work. Well, now we're stuck. And this is where a lot of people give up. I can't figure out the rule. And therefore, I don't know what to do. Okay? In this case, I said you could use one or the other or both to figure out the rule. Okay? So let's try both. If I said one... 1 times 4 is 4, but that doesn't work here. If I said 1 times 3 plus 1, then I have 2. So 1 times 3 is 3 plus 1. 2 times 3 is 6 plus 1. So if you can see, I'm using two different functions to get there two different functions to get there. There is a pattern, although it's hard to see, there's a pattern that goes through what number did we start at and where do we end. So you have to figure out that rule as we go. A way to always check yourself is to check this way. 4 plus 3, 7 plus 3. Okay, you can always check that way. You can always check through here too, okay? But in this case, if we did times 3 plus 1, we'd equal 10 each time. 3 times 3 plus 1 equals 10. So if we multiply by 3, so our n, n times 3 plus 1 gives us our answer. So if I said n is 100, 100, and then we did times 3, plus 1, that's 300 plus 1, our answer should be 301. So we need to figure out what the pattern is in order to move forward. We will still work on rules for n, but we're going to begin with just one rule before we start figuring out what two rules mean. There's also a way on a test that you can use your answers to figure that out. So I'm going to show you that a little bit later after we figure out some different patterns. But that is patterns for today.